All right, let's add the material to our newly generated UV map. So open up your file uh, that you created the UV map with. We will be importing uh, that image that we edited in Photoshop into our material. And hopefully it has something that kind of looks like this. Um, so make sure that you're in BP UV Edit as you start up. And then come over here where it says Objects. And you're going to um, first UV Mesh show you mesh and this is kind of something we worked on uh, in uh, part two of this tutorial series um, double click your texture tag here or just single click it there we go double click and we're going to import that texture we created and i believe it was one of these here this is the second one that i created so we open that one and it'll ask you this click yes and if you haven't, you could save. And now we can see that our image that we created looks quite awkward. Uh, so if I render this out, nice. So you can do something freaky like that, I suppose. Uh, but essentially what we want to do is move uh, this mesh, UV mesh, to kind of fit our image. Textures. Uh, if we look over here where textures are, I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Okay, there we are. Uh, and so now you can see it's automatically stretched my canvas here to fit and it's actually stretched my UV map. So what I want to do now is kind of pull some of these points around to make this fit. And there's a couple different ways you can actually do this. Um, but we're going to be using the magnet tool up here uh, to do that. And you can set some of the parameters of that magnet tool uh, or attributes of that uh, magnet tool also. But what we have to do is select uh, those points that we want to end up moving. And again, you can also move them over here and kind of watch what happens in real time over here. Uh, and so if I select all here with my magnet tool, and you can see down here in the options, if we go down to magnet here, my radius and my width, I can change and uh, mess with that a little bit. But you can see now I can actually move these, uh, this mesh to fit what I want. All right. Also, too, uh, I'm able to move the mesh here right on my face, so in real time painting here. So I can actually kind of line things up in that direction too. Um, so let's move that back. So essentially a little bit of common sense here and you're kind of on your way. Uh, there's not much else I really need to tell you. Um, but also too, if you're not able to do this here, it may be because of how you have your setup. Um, and I'm in projection painting mode and you can see I can't select that anymore. Uh, I've already, uh, already selected that. Um, so that allows me again to move this mesh uh, freely on both the model and this also. Uh, sometimes you might want to scale some objects and move some objects. This will be where all the detail is kind of happening. And then you can see these objects down here. I may want to move those off of the canvas. So I can again just select those. Hit my space bar. So go to selection, rectangle selection. Hold down my shift key. And that allows me to set all these little objects here. I can scale them down. These are the interior parts. Uh, with the eyes, we'll actually separate those and map those with a selection tool and a different material later. Um, but I'm going to hit E on my keyboard and move them down uh, off my canvas right now. Again, they're not lost. All I have to do is scale down here and I can see them. But for purposes of what we're doing modeling-wise, uh, we just want to see the canvas right here for right now. So um, again, I can then hit UI on my keyboard. That'll invert that selection so I don't accidentally move any of these. And now I'm going to go back to my magnet tool. And again, I can scale this up and down and quite a bit of different things that I could actually do here. But for the most part, I'm just going to use the magnet tool. I'm going to increase the radius here. And I'm going to start stretching and pulling it. So I'm going to decrease the radius now to about half, about 25%, and start doing a little bit more refining here later. And moving along, I'm going to get the ears up here. And what's cool about being able to move them on here is you can really I'm going to start going into the ear and stuff and start doing a lot more detail work. 
um, it's kind of really easy to see where it is your ear is being placed on there. So you can see right now I really need to stretch and move points in a finer mode. So I'm just going to reduce this down to 10. And you can see how I get a little bit more accuracy with what it is I'm doing here. Notice how I kind of grab out here a little bit when I'm moving that in, stretching that hair. Oops. So it's all about kind of refining and reducing the uh, reach of the magnet tool, or the radius in this case, for what it is we want to do. So we don't want to bring hair into the ear, but we do want to make sure it fits fairly appropriately. With what we're doing. So again, uh, a lot of refinement left to do there, but not too bad with where the ear is stretching. Just going to bring it in just a little bit more. Alright, so if we render just the ear out here, get an idea. It's mapped pretty well on there. Okay, uh, not bad. So we got a lot of lot to do here with the hair and the direction of the hair and stuff. And again, the more detailed your map is or your picture that you're bringing on here, the better resolution you're going to have for the materials on your model. So again, if I want to bring my eye down there so it doesn't look like I've just come out of the film 300, um, I start to move and utilize that stuff. Now you notice again I have some polygons in here, and that's the eyes. Uh, I would remap that. I wouldn't actually try to put the eye map that's on this um, texture map uh, onto that eye. I would actually uh, apply a different set for that and we'll do that later as I get into that. But again I'm just kind of making small adjustments with this and as I move faster through this uh, I start to get this as clean as possible. And so you can see here where it's starting to look a little bit better but this is where we would then come in um, after we get everything kind of generally applied and start making detailed motion here. And so I may, instead of um, having the whole mesh selected, I can increase maybe my radius here to what I'm selecting. That's, that would allow me to select a very fine, small amount of points. I'm going to select this up to about five. And move a few at a time. Go back to my magnet tool. Um, and again, I can just now start to make small adjustments. Bring this down to one percent, and you can see I can make a lot. It's a lot more acute in terms of what I'm doing. Uh, essentially, though, what you want to make sure that you do is you keep a pretty clean mesh. You don't want uh, these UVs getting too large in some areas and really small in others, unless that's trying to pick up that amount of detail. So again, like this one here, I hit my space bar, and then my space bar again to move it. Space bar to select, space bar to move it. It's just basically jumping between live selection and the magnet tool. Uh, it's going to allow me to um, kind of make those adjustments as needed. So try uh, to utilize both uh, of these uh, displays to um, direct your UVs. Uh, it'll allow you to kind of get a little bit better refinement as opposed to just using one or the other. So again, if I come in here, select some of these areas, and then I can start to move that down and you really get an idea. So you can see how it really skews some things. It's really interesting. And as you notice, I go over here to try to move stuff. I've already started to overlap uh, my points, and that's something you don't want. Right? So this is a great case for coming over here and moving these points, again, to get what you want, as opposed to, um, whoops, as opposed to uh, utilizing the 3D view over here. So general over here and then maybe more specific as we jump between them. It looks like I need to actually lift these up further. Bring those in. And again, try to remember to keep these fairly even because this does come from the mesh that you've already created here. Okay. All right, uh, I'm not going to go and do this whole thing, but I'm going to give you a kind of overview of uh, one that's already been worked uh, before. Uh, again, really work on lining these up to the specific areas on the map. Okay, 
such as like where the ear is at and the eye, and especially those detailed areas where the chin, the mouth, and the uh, nose are. And you'll have something that looks fairly similar. If I go to window here, this one I've already created, uh, to this here. And again, it looks more like, you know, it's, it's a textured game, head character. Uh, there's ways of using subsurface scattering, lighting, and all that other stuff to make this look a little bit better. Um, but for the most part, a uh, pretty quick resolution map. And if you're fairly far away with these, okay, it looks like you've got a, um, a head uh, self-portrait in this case for me. So um, if we look at this one, um, and let's look at its actual UV map. Oops. UV. I'm going to go ahead and clear this texture off of here. Empty canvas. There we go. Um, you can see I've stretched this out quite a bit. So if I go here to textures, self portrait map, there it is. Um, you can actually see the one that I've mapped here and Again, I've got quite a few little overlapping pieces here that need to be fixed. Let's make sure this is the right image here. That yeah, looks pretty good. Uh, and, and these areas here. And so this is again where I would come in and make refinements, spacebar, uh, magnet tool, and start to move things that would help kind of clarify where everything's at. Get rid of any of this kind of warped area. Select a few there, move them down, select one, move it down, and start to clean up this mesh again. Spacebar is uh, a great little tool when you're working in between two basic tools. So select, move, select, move. And then if I take a look at this on my model, you can essentially see what it is I am doing with the lips here. that over just a bit. And move that up. And we start to clean up that map a little bit more than's already been done with that.